Welcome to Hacks We Shed. If you've seen my video 64, you'll know that I was trying to track down an elusive vibration in the drivetrain of my lathe. I freely admit it's me trying to fill my time during lockdown. You know, if I was busy, I wouldn't even bother looking. But, you know, um, it's kind of interesting in a minor way. And I've had some good comments on that, actually. Um, one or two people have suggested it might be my VFD settings. And one person suggested also that I might check out some videos. And I looked at those and I've realised that not all VFDs work in the same way. Some of them change the speed through voltage, some through pulse width and so on. And some of the settings that were on and suggested in this other video I watched don't seem to be available with my VFD. So this video is really about exploring that further. Um, I think we can make it interesting for some people anyway. Here is the manual for my VFD. And as most men know, manuals are really only there to bulk out the packaging and should only be consulted as an absolute last resort. So I looked at some waveforms and some settings uh, yeah, 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 whatever. So what we'll do is get the VFD out and I'll rig it up with an oscilloscope and we can look at some of the waveforms. Then we can start looking at the manual if we get stuck. Okay, well there's all the bits on the floor. So the stuff at this side is for the headstock oil pump, for the time being anyway. This is the original switch gear. This is not in use. This rotary switch is in use. I could have done the reverser with a little toggle switch, but I wanted to keep it looking kind of original. But all this is low voltage. And of course, over there is the inverter. Um, I paid quite a lot of money for that inverter. I think that and the controller together, the remote controller, was about 350 pounds. Now, I probably didn't need to pay that much. I probably could have got something for 100 pounds on eBay for the, just the inverter. But at the time I was getting the lathe and some other things and this inverter had been recommended and I saw it to be kind of an industrial standard inverter as opposed to a hobby standard inverter. And I thought by paying that money, I would buy myself out of any risk. And, and that's kind of proved to be the case. You know, I plugged it in and it worked. I had no problems with it at all. I think now, well, actually, when I bought the Shaper, I just bought a second-hand one of these. And if that hadn't been available, I would have just bought one from eBay. As it turned out, a second-hand one of these was cheaper than a new eBay one. So, what I'm going to do is get this cover off here. And I'm going to connect up the um, oscilloscope onto the motor feed. And we'll just have a look at the waveforms. I don't use oscilloscopes very often and I hope I remember how to drive it. I've had this one since about 2005, 2006. I was working in Leeds, England, uh, quite frequently. And as I was walking back to the station in Leeds, I saw a shop under the arches, which was selling second-hand electrical and test equipment. So I bought this for 60 quid. Uh, didn't plan to, just saw it and bought it and uh, carried it on the train and then put it on the footboard of my scooter to get it home from the station here. And I think I've used it probably three times. Once was to show my son sine waves uh, on a mains supply, domestic mains supply. And then another time to help me diagnose a fault I had on my Mitsubishi space wagon where the top dead centre sensor had failed and that was in the distributor and there was also I think the crank angle sensor in there and by using this I was able to see that uh, one of them had failed and this is the third time but it's great fun to have one um, <laughs> if you've got the space I used to use them when I was a, an apprentice I think second and third year apprenticeship I used to fix old radio sets and uh, you know that was in like the late 70s and the stuff we were working on was valves or tubes, you might say. Um, and I've never forgotten all that stuff, really. 
Or at least I don't think I've forgotten it, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, let's turn on the VFD supply and see what we see. I'll have to twiddle the knobs a fair bit to uh, get the picture to work. I am struggling a bit with this. I can show you the waveform I get when the VFD is on idle. But then when I start the motor, the waveform is quite a weird shape and it's very difficult to sync on it. So I'm not sure I'm going to learn very much, but I'll show you anyway. The waveform we were looking at there was between one phase and Earth. I would have liked to have looked at the waveform between two of the phases, but I only have one probe for this oscilloscope, and the probe includes a divide by 10 head on the front. Without that, I would uh, blow the input circuit on the scope. Although we haven't seen anything conclusive, Actually, it was very useful because I checked the settings on my VFD and I found that one of them was actually incorrect. I'm not sure if it makes any difference, but it was the auto torque setting. And I believe what that does is it controls the input voltage to the motor as the torque reduces, that voltage goes down and vice versa. So whether that will improve efficiency or solve this noise, I have no idea. Uh, it's been a bit of fun to do. I didn't learn a lot, maybe you haven't learned anything either, but even so, thank you for watching Axby Shay.